thank you for joining me for another tutorial. In this one we'll be doing the Bowery top which is a comfortable wardrobe staple. It features an optional patch pocket in the front, cuffed sleeves, a curved hemline and a button placket at the back. This pattern allows a lot of scope for the imagination. So if you like to pattern hack then you are the artist and this is your blank canvas. This pattern has a loose fit, so if you are in between sizes, it is recommended that you make the smaller size. This pattern is cropped and meant to be worn with high waisted bottoms. If you wish to lengthen it, cut the lengthen and shorten line, measure the amount you want to lengthen it by, extend the fold line and then line up the bottom piece. I will be doing the same with the back pattern piece and also transferring all of the lines and markings. and adjusting my buttonhole placement. We're going to be stay stitching within the 7mm seam allowance. We're starting at the top shoulder and working our way down. We are pushing the fabric slightly towards the needle because we don't want to stretch it out, which is the purpose of stay stitching. Sew and finish the seams of your shoulders and then press it towards the back. I folded my lightweight interfacing double and placed it on the pattern piece so that I can just quickly use those guidelines to cut the right size. We are going to be placing this interfacing between fold line 1 and the centre back line. If you wish to, you can mark your fold line with a fabric marker. Remember to put the steam off on your iron when you are pressing interfacing. Place your placket along fold line 1 towards the wrong side. Now we are going to be folding along fold line 2 in the opposite direction towards the right side and pin it in place. Take your neck binding and press it in half with wrong sides together. Line 
lining up the raw edges of your neck binding with the raw edge on your neck line, we're going to be starting about 1.2 centimeters in from the edge. With a 7 mm seam allowance, sew the neck binding to the neck band and you're going to stretch it just ever so slightly to fit snugly into your neckline. Sew until you are 1.2 cm away from the folded edge. Now we're going to lift up the foot and then cut off the excess binding and continue sewing on to the end. Press your binding and your seam allowance away from the garment. Stitch the binding and seam allowance together by understitching as close as you can get to the binding side at the seam line. Trim away the excess seam allowance close to the stitching. Using a long stitch length, baste your front and back hems by 1.5 cm. When basting the back hems, make sure you are folding it towards the wrong side at fold line 2 as you did the top of the button placket. If you're using a heavier weight fabric, you might wish to reduce the bulk by cutting the seam allowance in half at the bottom of the placket. Using your basting stitches as a guide, you can now fold up the hem to meet the stitches towards the wrong side of the fabric. I'm folding the front hem in half again, making sure the basting stitches is on the inside and not showing on the outside of the garment. Turn out the corners of your button plackets and then press your back hem up. Now press your button plackets by 2 cm. Press under your neck binding as well as your button placket and your hem on the other side. Now we're going to pin all the way around. We're going to pin the bottom hem of the back, the button placket on the one side, all the way around the neck binding, down the button placket on the other side, and the back hem on the other side, and then we're going to also be pinning the front hem. So here we go, you're going to top stitch around the hem, the button placket, the neck binding and then you're going to top stitch again around the front hem.
pin, sew and finish the raw edges of your side seams. Then press your seam towards the back. I like to hide my overlocking tail just between the two fabric layers at the side seam. Grab your hand sewing needle. We're going to prep our thread for tangle free sewing. Take some pure beeswax and I'm using a dark thread for the contrast so that you can see it. Now we are going to be coating our thread in the beeswax. So you're going to be taking your thread just very quickly running it through the beeswax and then we are going to set the beeswax into the fibers of the thread by using our iron with the steam off and just pulling it through the heat. This only takes a few seconds but you will thank yourself for doing this. So now we have a beautiful soft conditioned straight sewing thread and it's ready to sew with. We are going to tack the side seam allowance near the hem towards the back. If you wished at this point you could remove those basting stitches we used at the hem, but I'm just going to leave mine in. Nobody can see it, right? Moving on to the sleeve cuffs, we're going to be sewing each cuff short ends together, right sides facing. And then we're going to press the seam open. Taking the unnotched edge of the sleeve cuff, you're going to sew a basting stitch at one centimeter all the way around, and then you're going to press up that one centimeter. Now matching the seam in the cuff to the side seam of the garment and the notch on top to the shoulder seam in the garment, we are going to be pinning the cuff to the armhole. Matching the single notches in the front and the double notches in the back. Using our 1cm seam allowance and a regular 2.5 stitch length, we're going to sew all the way around. I've pressed my seam allowances towards the cuff. We're going to be releasing a little bit of the tension at the underarm, so we're just going to be snipping to, not through, the stitching, just a few snips on either side. Now we're going to take that folded edge and we're going to line it up just slightly overlapping the stitching. This is at the shoulder seam. And then we're going to pin it all the way around, overlapping the stitching slightly. From the right side, stitch in the ditch all the way around. This is optional but I quite like the look of this cuff being folded up. 
So if you want to do that, you can simply just fold it up and then line up the underarm seam with the side seam. And then you're just gonna stitch in that seam line over there. Then I just do a little tack stitch on the top just to keep the cuff in place. If you wish to fuse the pocket's mouth as indicated in the pattern, you can do so now. You can fold the top down at the fold line and then press it and pin it. Now we're going to be basting at one centimeter down the sides and the bottom. Take your pocket piece and turn the top corners out. Press the edges under and then top stitch the pocket mouth down. Now I've got my markings over here from my pattern piece to mark where my pocket placement is. So I'm going to take my pocket and place it down on those markings. I've top stitched my pocket mouth down. And then I'm just going to be lining it up with the markings. Secure your pocket with pins. You can back stitch at the top of the pockets or you can make a little reinforcement triangle. I'm starting at the side sewing up a bit and then I'm counting how many stitches wide my triangle is. So I'm going to be going for one, two, three stitches, and then I'm going to remember that because I want to do three stitches on the other side too, so they look the same. We're just going to be top stitching the pocket down now on the sides and the bottom. Now we're back at the other side, so we're going to be doing the same one, two, three stitches, and then we're going to sew back down to meet the stitching at the side. Following the instructions for your particular sewing machine, make your buttonholes. I'm going to be sewing my buttons on by hand, that's my preferred method. So I'm just securing the button and then I'm putting a button spacer in. You can also use a pin or a matchstick. Now I'm just putting in a couple of stitches. I'm going to wrap it a couple of times around the shank and then knot it at the back. Attach the rest of your buttons and you're done.